Hey everyone, my name is Aria, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this animation in Blender 2.8. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is click the default cube and hit delete. Shift A to add a new mesh, and we're going to click circle. Click this little down arrow, and we're going to change the vertices to 8, and the radius to 1000. We're also going to change the fill type to triangle fan, and if we zoom out, you can see um, that we've got a bit of an issue with our camera clipping in the background, so if you go to view, by the way, if you don't have this menu, you can click this little arrow here or hit N on your keyboard um, and then click view. And let's change this to something super large. So just add some zeros. And now you can see that we can see all the way back. So the next thing we want to do is add a collision property to this ground plane. So let's go to the physics property and click collision. And then we can leave everything as default. That'll work great for us. Next, click the Modifiers tab, and we're going to add a Subdivision Surface modifier, and click the Viewport to 2. And the last thing we want to do for our ground plane is go to Materials, add a new material, and you can see here, if we go to Shading, that we've added a node setup, and this is great for doing more complex textures, but for what we're doing today, we just need this little side menu here, so let's set the roughness to 0. And we're going to change the index of refraction to 1.333, which is the same as glass. I added an extra 3, but let's... Let's just change that back. And transmission to 1. And you can see now that if we click the render view button, which is right here, um, or we can hold Z and go to rendered as well, that nothing's really happening. The reason why is because we're actually just reflecting a gray background. So what we need to do is go to the world properties here. And instead of having a color, we can actually click this little circle and add an HDRI. So click environment texture. So now we can click the open button and find an HDRI on your hard drive to use. By the way, if you want to use the one I'm using, if you go to hdriskies.com, it's actually the second one on their page. It's called uh, Sky 500. Um, for this website, you do need to create a free account. So if you don't want to do that, you can actually go to HDRI Haven, and they've got some great HDRIs as well. And with these ones, you can just click on the sides you want, and it'll automatically download to your hard drive. So let's click Open Image. And now you can see that we've got some reflections happening here. So let's go back to just the flat shading here, and we're going to zoom in. And we're done with our ground plane, so the next thing we want to do is add in our icospheres that will be displacing the cloth simulation. So hit Shift A, and we can add in an icosphere. And if I hit G, you can see now that um, the icosphere will move around with the mouse wherever it goes. In this case, we want to lock it to the up and down axis, which is Z. So we're going to hit the Z key, and you can see now that it's stuck to that axis no matter where we move our mouse. So we can move it there, and then we're going to hit S to scale this, and then just bring in our mouse towards the center a little bit, and that should be fine. So the next thing we want to do is go to the modifiers tab here, click subdivision surface, and we're going to change the viewport to 2. And then we can right click and hit shade smooth to get a nice smooth surface. So the next thing we need to do is create an animation for this icosphere. So if we go up into the corner here, you can see that my mouse changes into like a little plus symbol. So let's left click and drag. That did not work. Left click and drag. And it's going to duplicate our window. So we can click this menu bar and go to the graph editor. And you can see that there's nothing here. So the next thing we need to do is add some keyframe um, animation data to our icosphere. So while having the icosphere selected, we're going to hit I, and that'll bring up the keyframe menu, and then we can click location to add a location keyframe to the X, Y, and Z. The next thing we want to do is hit normalize, and you can see now that we've got some stuff to work with here. So if we hit N, we can bring up this little side menu, and that can work on any window. You just have to make sure that you've got the mouse hovered over the proper window, and click modifiers. So if we select our X location, we can click this little menu and add a noise modifier. And you can kind of do whatever you want, but I'm going to just do what I remember my settings to be. And then instead of adding a new one every time, what we can do is actually click this copy modifiers like that. And then when we go to Y, we can just paste and just change the phase just a little bit. And same with the Z location. And then we can change the phase just a little bit. And now you can see when we hit play, we've got some animation happening here with our icosphere. Let's hit N to get rid of that menu. And what we want to do now is add two more icospheres. So we're going to hit Shift and D to duplicate our object. And we're just going to bring it into place. 
and you'll see that if we hit the space bar and play the animation, it snaps back into place. And the reason for that is, is we made a keyframe for our original sphere on frame one. So we need to do that again for our new icosphere. So let's hit G and bring it into place. And then we can hit I again to bring up the keyframe menu and hit location. And now if we play, you'll see that they're doing the exact same thing in different spots. So what we want to do is make sure we change some parameters with our second icosphere just a little bit, just so they're, they're differing a bit. You don't want to go too much, though. And we want to change that for all of our axes, just a little bit. And there we go. So now if we hit play, you can see it's, it's doing a different thing than the one above it. So now we want to create one more icosphere. So we're going to click the original one, hit Shift-D again to move it into place. And then we're going to hit I to keyframe the location. For a new location and then change some of the parameters again on this one here and that should work just fine for us so let's hit play and that's looking good so what we can do now is right click on this uh, center line here and click join areas and left click over here and we'll lose that window and this is a good point to save so i'm just going to save my project here and can go up here and save if you need to. And now that we've got our displacement objects, we need to actually add a collision modifier to them. So we're going to click over here on the physics properties and we're going to add a collision to each of these icospheres. So one, two, and three. Great. So now the next thing we want to do is add in our class. So we're going to hit shift A, go to mesh, and hit plane. And then we can hit G to move our object. And let's hit Z to lock it to that axis. And let's move it just above the top icosphere. Click to set it in place and then what we can do is we can scale this up so we're going to hit S and then scale it by 7. So we'll hit S and then 7 and then enter. And now we're going to create our simulation. So let's make sure we're in the physics properties here and click cloth. And you can see it did something really weird there and the reason why is because we're on frame 104. So we want to go back to frame 1 and you can see now that it's gone back to normal. And if we hit play you can see that it's doing something, but it's not really doing what we want. And the reason for that is, let's go back to frame one. If we go into edit mode by hitting tab, or we can go here and click edit, you'll notice that this plane only has four vertices. So there's nothing for it to, to sort of bend upon. Like it needs more than just four vertices. So we're gonna right click and click subdivide. And for what we're doing today, 75 will work just fine. So type in 75 for number of cuts and then we can hit tab to go back. And if we hit play now, you can see that the cloth is working a little bit more like cloth should work. You'll start to notice as we play more of the simulation that the faces start to crash through one another, which is not what we want because that's not what cloth does in real life. So we need to add a few more settings to this. So we're gonna go back to the first frame again and we're gonna scroll down to if internal springs and we're gonna click that on. And that's just going to give it um, a little bit more bounce to it, so it's not going to be so floppy. And the other thing we want to do is click this little arrow, Collisions, and add Self Collisions here. Um, and now if we play the simulation, you'll see it's acting a lot more like a cloth like it's supposed to be. So what we can do now is, you'll notice that in my animation, my cloth doesn't start as a flat uh, plane. It actually starts somewhere in the middle. So what we can do is go somewhere, say here, um, and we can go to the modifiers tab and we can actually apply this cloth simulation by clicking apply. And what will happen is we'll actually lose our simulation, but we'll sort of get that starting um, position. So leave it on the frame that um, you picked and what we're going to do is we're going to add a we're going to click on the cloth and we're going to add a new cloth simulation and go back to frame one and we're not going to turn this on this time but we will turn on self collision so let's click that and now when we're on frame one you can see that it starts in this new position and we hit play and it will simulate from there on What we can do now to make it look a little bit nicer is if we go to the modifiers tab, we can add a subdivision surface 
and set it to two again. Um, and you just want to make sure that the subdivision surface is underneath of the cloth simulation because if it's above, you're going to have a very uh, bogged down system because it's going to try to simulate all those subdivisions. So make sure you've subdivided it after the cloth simulation. And then what we can do is we can right click and shade smooth. And now you can see that things are looking a lot better when we simulate it. And if we go back into rendered view, you can see we're getting a lot closer to um, the goal. So the next thing we need to do is add a material to the um, cloth here. So let's go to materials tab, make sure we've selected the cloth and we can go to new. And again, we're just gonna do a very basic glass material for this. So roughness to zero, index of refraction to 1.333 and transmission to one. And now you can see we're getting a lot better reflections on our cloth and it's looking great. So at this point, we're pretty much finished. What we want to do now is just sort of set up our scene. So we already have a camera added. And if you don't, you can hit Shift A and add a camera here. But since we have one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Control and Alt and hit zero on our numpad. And you can see that our camera will snap to the view that we had. Um, you can also notice here that it's creating a problem. And the reason why is because of our clipping plane again for this specific camera. So let's click on the camera here and we're gonna go down to camera here and we're going to make sure that our clipping plane here is set to something again quite large so just add a bunch of zeros and you can see now that we've got you know a view that goes all the way to the back here you can also change our focal length to 35 and the last thing we want to do with our camera is add some depth of field you'll notice in the background we've got this very sharp line here so if we add some depth of field um that'll blur that out a bit so what i like to do is select a focus object so we can select the plane which is our our cloth simulation here um, and we're going to set this to something super low like 0.2 and now you can see you've got like a nice um, blended edge between the background and our ground plane here and what we can do next is if we want to set up our scene a little better we can go um, into this shading tab here and if we select this menu and go to world what we can do is Let's hit zero to go and see inside our camera so we can see a bit better what we're doing. There is a add-on in Blender that's pre-installed. If you go to pref edit preferences and you search for node Wrangler, you can make sure this is clicked on. And now if we click our HDRI and hold control and hit T, you can see it brings up these two extra nodes. And what we can do is we can actually rotate our HDRI to get something a little nicer. I think mine was something like this here when I did it. So let's keep it, let's keep it about there. Just some nice different colors and contrast is nice. And that's pretty much it. You'll notice that there's no reflections um, underneath right now. And at this point, I would probably switch into a different render engine. So if you click this button right here, instead of using Eevee, which is a real-time render engine, we can use cycles and immediately when we switch over to that, you'll see the lighting is a lot better um, and we've got some reflections. I'm already noticing one of the things we forgot to do here is hide the icospheres. And we definitely wanna do that. So what we can do is if we go up here and click these two icons here, we can make sure that we hide the icospheres so that we don't see them anymore, so that they're, they're invisible. We can turn this off here. And now you can see we've got um, pretty much our end result. So if we go to render here and click render image, first what we wanna do is make sure if you've got a um, GPU, switch to GPU, it'll go a lot faster. And let's render again. And there we've got our, our final image. So. The other option too is if you don't want to use um, cycles or if you've got say a laptop or something like that that's a little slower, um, there are ways of getting reflection um, in Eevee. Uh, I know that you can add a light probe and if you add a reflection plane here, let's make sure our guides are turned on as well. And if we hit S and just drag the mouse, we can scale up that reflection plane. And then what we want to do is make sure that we turn on a few different options here for the EV render engine. So let's turn on um, screen space refractions and reflections. And we're also going to go to indirect lighting and we have to bake it. So let's turn on auto bake. 
and bake the lighting. And then we're going to have to just move this in place just a little bit higher up. And now you can see we've got these, these nice little reflections here. The other thing we want to do, because we're using EV, is if we click on this cloth and go to the Material tab, we want to make sure that each of our materials has screen space refractions set to on. So let's click that. We're also going to do it for the ground plane. So we can click our circle and turn this on as well. move this a little bit and we can scale it up so we get a little bit more of what we want there and you can also add in one more light probe um, called reflection cube map and you can scale this up and now we're getting a bit more of the proper lighting setup there's a bit of issues with this and I'm not exactly sure um, how to fix them at this point I'm still learning so you can see that it's, it's doing something, but it's, it's kind of weird. So my suggestion for this scene would be to use uh, cycles and you'll just get all that lighting information automatically set up. You don't need um, these cube maps at all. So that's everything. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. This is my very first one. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and give me a like and I'll have more on the way. Thanks. Bye.